Hello, and God bless you. This is Ellen Mongan from Wow well Mom. I'm the host today with my co host, Jane Ann Bomber. Hi, Jane Ann. Hey, Ellen, how's it going? <laughs> it's going to be doing this a really a while now, Jane. We've been just almost a year, I think, solid. I can't other. believe it. I really can't. And I think we've gotten better and better, y'all. What do you think? Please tell us. <laughs> we will Send us a note. <laughs> thumbs up for thumbs up. Any criticizes, I may cry. Jane, Jane will be, be poised. She's, she's Southern charm. So I am excited about today because we usually have a, I'm going to turn my phone down so it doesn't ding. We usually have a guest, an interview. We're trying that three times a month. But then one week a month, we're trying to have Jane and I come on and talk about either current events or what's going on in the church. And today that is what we're going to do. Ordinary time to celebration. Because built in our church, we have like a whole rhythm. And we all know that that's yes. always a good thing. I'm so, I'm so that way, Jane. I like a routine. So what do you think about a routine in our church? Oh, I love it. The liturgical season. That's, that's what I love. I know it goes That's to- what keeps me, that, I don't know, it keeps me focused and I kind of, uh, you know, like the sun rises and the sun sets, and like, <laughs> especially with our, you know, Advent coming up. I mean, with everything that's going on in the world, I'm so looking forward to that. I'm looking, it's like a refreshment, like, like living, you know, streams of living water. It's like, you know, for a dry and parched place. I mean, so we are really looking forward to it. We always like go through Pinterest, look for great decoration <laughs> ideas, me and the girls. We like get ready to decorate the house. So we're really excited. I like that, Jan. Jan has gone from like a, a sweet baby girl, which is the oldest now. We call her the baby girl because it was her firstborn. Then then she's got five boy house. That was less a long time. That's been a while. <laughs> a couple of years that. ago. I've got girl season. So it's so not even that's a routine. There's a scripture yeah. in Ecclesiastes. I wish I had told us to read it. We can kind of say there's a time for every season under heaven. And that's where yes. I think we get that liturgical. But I'm wearing my green for ordinary times and I'm I'm, there's nothing ordinary about me. I would say that I like stick out to where I go. I, I don't go, okay, I'm trying to be undercover. And like that's, I do. So I'm ordinary time to me, would it mean as much as it does now, Jan? Because when I had some of my babies, not all, people like to think I was all in postpartum. I wasn't. I was 10 days in postpartum with like three of my children. And then when my baby died, of course, I went into a little bit of a depression. But ordinary time is a lot to me because when you've been, you ever been had postpartum depression lays or been depressed or had a parent die and took you a whole really strong, you know that on a normal day when nothing's good, nothing bad, ordinary you go this is great because you're not in that season of having to fight a battle of sadness or hurt but it's so important to grieve healthily jen i think it's so important when you go through something do anything instead of go like i'm just gonna get busy and i'm not gonna worry because it's still in your soul and you could hide it and mask it with a real smile like this but it's really not what it is. Mm-hmm. There are times every season. And so ordinary time means a lot to me. And I sometimes I go, oh, the green. Okay, then. <laughs> but now we're getting ready, Jen, to enter Advent, which you said is exciting. I account that like a the Protestants have revival. And any Protestants watch this, we wholly welcome you with open arms. We're not those two that say, you know, we, have, we welcome all. All are welcome yes. in our heart, home, and in our lives. But they they have revivals. And they've asked me before, when, do you all have revivals? I said, yeah, we have Advent. We have what? <laughs> Yes. And then we go. Then we go into the high holidays of Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and we are revived. Oh, our soul. What do you think about the? I love that bishop. Our bishop is Stephen Parks. They also have a bishop in Tampa. His brother is also Bishop Parks. They he actually has decided to have our words, which I'm a really a fan of. I've written on those words before, like refresh, renew, and so that's what we're doing during this season. We're all we had it. We have times that we kind of get lax, don't you think, Jen? Even in housework, we get lax, or even in life yes. in general, and then we we come, we come alive. Yep, I'm I'm in agreement, absolutely. And I think words are important because it really helps you to get a mindset of where you've been, where you are, and then where you're going. And I think it's good to tell the kids that, like. I said that a lot in the summer to make sure that they had some kind of, I'm a goal-minded mother. Remember, I'm like obnoxious. And so I think even for, for Advent, I would say this <laughs> in my old age, make your goals low. <laughs> Have too many goals. You don't really win, run the race to win. You're all over the map, but do it as yeah. best for you. So coming up is Advent. Jen, I really don't even know the date. Is it this Sunday? It's November 28th. Thank you, ma'am, because that's coming up. And I have, we have so much in our life, Jan. We didn't even say what we had in our life, but um, one of the ways in our real life that we celebrate is we just had a wedding last Saturday. It was a huge celebration. And I'm going to tell you this, dude, being the mother of the groom is way, way less work and less. Oh. Well, these two are very, you know, John is 30 and, and Kendra was some younger as they wanted to plan it themselves and make it theirs. And I so am a fan of, 
even in Advent and Christmas and traditions, young mothers make it your own, right? Don't be like my mom. Yeah, set this. Your own, yeah exactly. You. Because it's, you know, set your own traditions up because then now that you're a new family and you're starting off, you have to make your own for your own family. And I think that's good. And then you, yes. then you like, some people will, some people say, um, well, where is the, I don't know, bread pudding. I don't make bread pudding. <laughs> the pet are big fans of we are we, we're, we would be those people if we weren't didn't have our charity and Carolyn and Caitlin and Amanda our girls we would be yeah. those people that, that catered out or went to a restaurant Thanksgiving and it'd be okay <laughs> my mom and sister like to do Thanksgiving as well so we we have one Thanksgiving in Florida and one here in Georgia we don't know which one we're going to choose it depends on where most of our kids are because isn't holidays really about this Jan being with your family it's not what you do yes. or what you eat it's who you're with absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so and, and i think oh, sorry. And I, i'm sorry I, I think for moms i think it's uh you know if you have small children or babies and that are all in between like we did for a long time i, I just want to say it's really important that a mom has a really good attitude during oh. all the you know even with the in-laws or the outlaws whatever you want to call them you know <laughs> i mean really is the time yeah, it really is a time to, you know, embrace everybody. Love covers a multitude of sins. Thank you. Says. So it, it is, and I look at it as an opportunity. And then to really listen to where, you know, when you get together and you haven't seen people in a while. So this is where the mom's attitude comes in because your children are watching you, watching. you know, and if there's a difficult, you know, somebody in the family, uh, you know, how you deal with them, how you interact with them. I think that's important also, you know, love them right where they are. And to free them up as and moms, like when your children get married, free them up to say, no, I, you know, this is your, we, we do a, a holiday thing where we pick holidays. So Pat yes. and I are going to end up spending Christmas with a man in Kyle in Kentucky because it's their turn. And we spend Christmas with one family because of the fact that we have such a large family to get to know each other intimately. You know, we want to have that. That's a good so, idea. Um, we do that, but we also have Christmas again. With the major, everyone gets together, brothers, sisters. Sometimes we go away. One time we went to the mountains and we all had Christmas. We exchange gifts. The kids exchange with each other. We don't do a lot of that. We give money in a beach trip. So it is just yours. It's your, you know, this is a choose your own adventure. <laughs> what are some of your Thanksgiving traditions, Jan? So people can copy um, because I'm sure you have better we, ones than me. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. I like what you said though, because when we got when we first got married, uh, it was uh, my mom and dad really gave us the grace, just like what you said. Okay, it's your family. You have to start your own traditions. You know, you have to be, you know, your family, what's good for you. So, you know, you're always welcome over here. And we did get together with my mom and dad a lot. And then uh, my husband's parents a lot. But now what we do is because we do have 11 children and now we're growing because we have one, a son that just got engaged. So we'll be getting hey. a, a daughter and I don't call her a daughter in love. <laughs> and anyway, so we just usually get together here um, at, at our house because everybody's just now starting to get their own homes. Well, and we do, our first daughter's married um, and we do have one grandchild. So, you know, everybody's kind of over here, but then they go with their, you know, we don't put any restriction. We don't try to micromanage Christmas, you know, like, or can we come with the Joneses? I don't even know the Joneses. Do you have, Jan, do you have certain foods you make on Thanksgiving or does everybody bring something or I'm interested just because I like to learn from other families. I don't do yeah, anything. All, I show we, up. Now that, now that Jocelyn okay. has her own home, we just, you know, she brings things, but this year they're going to be moving at Thanksgiving. So wow. she's ordering out. <laughs> she's I like hearing out. I'm so a fan. <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't, and I did. My first time I, was, awesome. I was not. I remember saying, No, you don't cook homemade pies. You pick up at Sam's. I was like <laughs> insulting to the host because I was a co host of Miss Carriage Matters. The gal was going, No, Sam's has really good pies. And I go, Yeah, I make I everything you homemade. Do. I have changed because, you know, I have physical. I have physical things that I can't do as much as I used to do. And I'm so right. thankful to do media because that's what I can do best at in writing. So, yeah, I, the homemade pies at Sam's, just for a tip for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And well, we have a Mennonite restaurant here. Near oh, us. You never and told so me. Go, I gotta go. Yes, we do a pre-order and we go and pick them up. And but I'm the same way. And there's different seasons at what you know for your for your holidays, you know, for Christmas or at whatever. So you will maybe there be a season where you have to order out it all the time. You just don't know. So you have to kind of go with the flow, is what I say. And because I don't think we should get so rigid that we're like, okay, I'll never have another meal that's not home cooked because that's just not reasonable. That's right. We and that's a large family. Our family loves home cooking, and they do. They do oh, so. We do too. They don't ever ask 
me to do Thanksgiving. <laughs> Once this reader said to me, said to me, you're not going to try to steal Thanksgiving. I know I'm so not a food person yet. I'm more the Christmas present person. I like the presents yeah. and the gifts and giving to the grandkids. But I think it's important because I used to say to mothers, and I probably said to you a hundred times, I used to say to mothers that were nursing, they go, they, I teach the parenting classes at the care of pregnancy or at, you know, some place where they, you know, mothers were pregnant and wanted to know what to do. And I teach the classes and I go, you could either nurse or you can give bottles. But whatever you do, do it with no guilt. Just right. That's what Absolutely. You do. That's a good word. That's all you can do. Because if you true. do bottles and you go, I should have, I should have nursed, so I go back to work. I mean, I should have, yeah, I should have nursed, so I should have gone back to work. And you have all that guilt. It's worse than even doing babies yes. can sense. They can sense, you know, and children, they can sense that this is gonna be a great jovial Thanksgiving or or Aunt Matilda's coming and she's gonna say something wrong. <laughs> you know, like, okay, you're like, okay, it's better to um take the attitude high. You know, we, we talked last year about thanks living, make every day a, a living thanks. Yes. You know what the scripture was today, Jane, you may have read it, but it was, it was the 10 lepers. You know, we want to be. Oh yeah, I did read it. Yes, and only one came back to thank, thank the Lord and give him thanks. For so the most important thing is whatever you serve or do, have a grateful heart. I was looking at my own life, Jane, and I was thinking to myself, if I were to say what my biggest fault was, it was unseen. Like it was plans and nose on my face to everyone else, but I couldn't see it. It would have been discontentment. Like if I had a newborn, I wow. wish I could have. I just I wanted to run around and yeah. do everything. And I had to hold the newborn nurse. And if I hadn't had, I lived in this place, I want to live there. And I, I go, I have had discontentment so many times that at this present moment, you did that thank the Lord, hallelujah, and praise the Lord, 10 leopards. I will say that I'm so happy to be near my family, almost all of the yes. same neighborhood. I'm happy to be in Georgia and in our home church, which is Holy Trinity. And we feel so at home, Janet. It's like I used to know Pat about old shoes. You know how you put on an old shoe? It doesn't hurt like the new shoes. Yes, yeah, you don't have to you wear know. it in. You don't have to wear it. I wear it in. Like I'm here. I am. All my friends are here, and I like go. Oh, then you know, I just like, oh Lord, I know it won't last forever, just like you said. But I'm going to treasure these moments. You know, yes. it's, it's a um, song. We have this mm-hmm. moment to hold in our hand. It's Bill Gaither, and to touch as it slips through our fingers like sand. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow may never mm-hmm. come. You don't know yeah. your tomorrow. And we have this moment today. You know, I said that, Jan. My sister has had a stroke. And I felt so sorry for her at the wedding. See, I was the mother of the groom. I didn't have much to do, but I had to be, you know, my friendly self. I was a flight test. I went and talked to everybody, danced, so I dropped and then regretted it because I had the injury on my knee. But anyways, it was so much fun. But then I said, did anybody talk to Lynn? Well, one, yeah, there wasn't as much conversation for her. She's had a stroke. It's visible. So it's, it, please pray for those who are not able, because when they're in the season of suffering, they're not saying yes. this is great. I don't even think it was great when I went through depression. I was like, now I can go, wow, an ordinary day. I don't have that anymore. It's gone. It blew. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to, to reach out to the, um, the, what was it? What was Anne DeSantis book? Reach out to the uh, unmarginalized, the marginalized. Oh yeah. Yeah. The marginalized. Yes. Please read that book. I mean, really, and I'm plugging for you because that book has just little, little things and it gives a lot. Great. No, well, we meet people along the way, Jane and I, and we treasure each one. So we're going to go, we're going to go on. Yeah. Right. And you, yeah. Well, I just want to say the, the, on the going back to the holidays. So the three things that I, you know, I wrote down three things like right. food, decoration. But the one thing I really thought about was on my three things was attitude, like what we were just saying, attitude for yes. the mother, because we set the tone for our house. We set the atmosphere for our house. So, you know, aside from all the food, the cooking, you know, how are we you know, do we feel, and I said doing exercise, this is what I like doing. So I, I recommend this for mothers who have got right. small ones or little ones right. or whatever, but do a, uh, to sit down before the holidays, like right now is before Advent comes. And because once it kicks in, we know it's just like when you have children and you got programs and game, it's, it's on, You're, you know, and it, your day can be, cons- yeah, and your day can be some consumed. So we have to be intentional, but really sit down with a notebook and just on a piece of paper and just brain dump. Like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you see your family? You know, what do you want for your family? But after, you know, after you brain dump, pick a couple of those things that really mean the most to you about the holidays, about, you know, Christmas or Thanksgiving, you know, Advent, the things coming up, you know, really, you know, and write those down and keep those like in a journal or in front of you so that when the, when everything gets really tight, you know, when you got a big schedule, then you'll remember and just, you know, smile, smile at your children, smile at your husband. I think our attitude, just try to, you know, that really is important. I and think that's every, my big, once, oh, sorry, go yeah, on. 
That's why I picked once it that's set up, I think then everything else falls in place after that. I think so. I picked actress by second career, you know, being doing that for my second career because I had limitations. I write and speak and do that. But you know what? Why I picked that? Because I'm so good at it. We had children. We had I had um eight laborers. Janet had had more than me, 11 plus maybe for Miss. But I'm saying this. I can fake it, so I make it so good that when I'm dancing at the wedding, everybody goes, is your knee better? Well, no, I have laborers, and I was <laughs> wild through it. No one even knows I was in labor. I would get there, and they go, are you in labor? Because it doesn't look like, because, you know, fake it till you make it. Even if you're not having a good day, maybe yes. your face flopped. Maybe your turkey, you forgot to turn on. Oh, well, you can say, by the way, we're going to have some entertainment before. Get the kids to get out there. Our kids always love to entertain. Do something creative, and I always like this, Jen. Disappointment, God's appointment. It's a time to yes. say, "Whoa, That's think about like a lot." Go ahead, go ahead, because it does. It just life is unpredictable, and mm -hmm. soon and very soon we're gonna do a, a an interview with Matthew Kelly about the book "Life Is Messy," and you have to take what you are given that day, and you have to work with it. So I think it's very important. Those are important points on Thanksgiving. Do you yes. want to move on to Christmas? Because you know Christmas is my favorite thing. I used to like Thanksgiving, Jen. We used to play football, right? tag football and we have two teams it was at my mom's house mom would cook a feast everyone show up we do football we do karaoke and i loved thanksgiving i was like this is the best holiday then it turned to all food and just talking so you're okay i'm so grateful for what i've got <laughs> you know it just changes so we just say this thanksgiving is worth is worth it to be uh -huh. thankful don't go with a grubby attitude and say like whoa we should have played football why are we just eating <laughs> Right. And also what you're right. what you're as a mom or a new mom, what you're doing right now is gonna it you will reap the the benefits. You know, like like you were saying, if you're if you're you know fake it till you make it, yeah, you may wake up in the morning, you're like, I really don't want to, you know, cook this meal or whatever. But you, we got to get past the feeling and we know that it's for our family and we do it for the love of the love of love of Jesus. We do it for our, you know, we do it to, unto him. But you will, I mean, I have seen so much fruit from the things that, you know, I made because we, because we, feeding a large family, especially homeschooling, we did three meals a day here at the wow. house. And then when Thanksgiving came, I was like, I feel like I'm having just a Thanksgiving every day. Boys eat so much. So, but you, you know, now the children, they sit around with, you know, the, our older ones do, they tell stories and they oh, like, oh, remember this, remember that. So, but they're all filled with really good memories. And so that right there oh. blesses me for all the times that basically it's kind of like a sacrifice. I mean, you're, you're, you have to move past where you are. So it, like you said, if you have oh, a hurt oh. knee, <laughs> something's going on in your body, you just have to kind of keep moving forward. Ask for the it. grace and the strength. That is the great. joy of the I, Lord is my strength. That's right. I like that. That's grace for sure. But I do want to mention one more thing, Jan, and you do this, I'm sure, in the natural already. And I did as well because I, I was more survival. Jane and probably does it because it's a large group. Delegate. Find your niche. Oh, like, yeah. Delegate. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to set the table and decorate and make it look nice. I'm all about the beauty of the occasion. And then the girls yes. like to cook. I will donate some. Some like, like, Mom, please don't bring anything. <laughs> I'm a really good cook, Jan, but they don't know that. So I go, I have a new oven. I go, I'm playing the oven. <laughs> And I don't mind doing it, but they will go, right. they have it, they go, we got it. Because I have some simple fires, Jan Ann, and you have to honor that when you have extra children that are married. Yes. You know, you know, some simplify. Maybe they don't always bring all the fixins. My mom brought all the fixins. You know, she was that person. I'm not going to eat all the fixins. Why don't I even care? But I go, what should I bring? I never go, like, I brought a pumpkin pie. Well, we have four of those from Sam's. <laughs> you have to know what your child is like. So two are really simple fires. They go, mom, we're doing things elegant but simple. Two are really extravagant. They go, we're bringing the whole, but the whole world is invited. <laughs> we're bringing the food. I'm sorry. That's, that's good. That, that That's good. Because I thought this year, uh, my daughter and I were talking about Thanksgiving and I'm like okay so I'm gonna send a list out to everybody that's <laughs> I'm, cool. like, that's cool. I'm all like you choose what you want to bring and then everybody right. will have brought something <laughs> and everyone likes to do it I, I had one sister for a long time she was doing all now she's got older kids more grandkids it just you know what it snowballs let's face it there's no snow in Georgia thank you <laughs> it does snowball you think well this is easy I can handle one child then you get two I get up two you kind of grow into the role I had a grandchild when I was a having a fifth grader so I had to really grow into grandparenting now we have 14 well that's a lot of people when you all sit down and have the wedding you're like half the wedding for our side was the family I didn't care I that's love us. my family so Jan thank you Thanksgiving moving on to Christmas because I don't this might be the show we were promising not to go over I showed you all before I have my big clock now 
I can't yeah. miss it. <laughs> but it says that when Cinderella digs, we got to take our shoes off and go home. So anyways, the next <laughs> thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about Christmas because it totally is my favorite holiday. I love Easter yes. and I, oh, every sweet. day I remember what he's done for me. Every day I remember because I am a person that needs a savior. I've been saying to him, Jesus, you know me, I need a savior. I'm not pretending. I really, really do. My kids will tell you that. But I love Easter, but and I love that Pat's on the altar. He's at Deacon's. There's many holidays we get to celebrate intimately with the Lord together. But Christmas is like my high holiday. I, I wrote this article one time. If every day were Christmas, I think it's sent it in somewhere again. It was a couple many years ago, like five years ago. If every day were Christmas, we'd all be a smile on our face and joy. There's something about Christmas that makes everybody come alive and get excited. What do yes. you think? I think so. Yeah, Christmas is our favorite as well. It is our favorite. And because really everybody pulls together in our family, even when we, even when the kids were little, oh, when, oh I'll tell you one time I pulled together. So a couple of years ago when I had had a surgery, oh, I couldn't, yeah. I was, you know, I actually I'd had a hysterectomy. So I was bed bound. I couldn't do anything. And it was right there at Christmas. And our daughter went and did all the Christmas shopping for yes. this entire family. And she was married yes. and had a baby. Uh, so I look at that and I'm like, but her husband told her, uh, because it was great. Everybody loved their gifts. It was wonderful. And that's when, you know, families can pull together and work for each other. And God just really provided. So, but her husband told her, um, don't do such a good job because they may want you to do it again. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. You might need that in future years, children. That's true. I'm sorry, I'm coughing. I do not have COVID. I just have a, a tickle in my throat. And I never, I never um, like to cough on air, but Oh, it's a blooper. <laughs> so, Jim, what, did you, how, what do you kind of do for gifts? I mean, that's a lot of, we simplify. In that area, we do simplify. We simplify. Most of my husband, who is a simplifier, and why half the family is simplifier and half the family is extravagant is because yes. that and I are the opposite couple. So, what do you do about right. that? How do you We're do We're frugal. Gifts? We're very frugal when it comes. So, we just have them make a list of maybe, you know, six or seven things, and then they narrow it down to the three things they really like. Okay. And then we kind of just go from there. But now, the, the, some of the kids are really older. You know, they're pretty, actually, they're pretty simple. Um, right. Usually just money. That's what we do. Money is a universal language. <laughs> this is a funny story, kid. It doesn't fit in at all. I am not elderly. I really am just 68. And I think I'm 42, but I don't write down good notes. So we give a certain amount for birthdays and a certain amount for anniversaries and a certain amount That's for adults. And we have a set thing, like 40 is for the children until they get to be a certain age. And then they get 50 like the adults for their birthday. And then for Christmas, so I don't have to do anything but write the card. And then on Christmas, we give a certain amount. So we have this one grandkid and I had forgotten. And I go, I gave him a hundred dollars. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, that's anniversary of Christmas. And he said, thanks. He was really happy. And my dad goes, I told you that was what you're not supposed to give. So I can't make it up. I can't go like, well, now everybody gets 100 because that's not my husband. And so if you get the blessing, you can't be like, <laughs> I like the eyes on your own paper. You can't go like, what did Richie get? Or what did Corbin get? You got to go like this. This is what I gave you this time. And happened before one kid got the extra money too. And she said, yeah, that happened to me one time. I never said anything. So you got to go like this. <laughs> It's going to be, you know, you can't, I hate when people do that, Jan. Do you hate like, like I didn't get invited or I, or I would think that a, a mom didn't get me that or a mom didn't do that. I don't like that. Oh you know, yeah. Mom is human. I'm sorry. Even on Christmas, we are human. I'm human for sure. I need a savior and we can't make it all even. I'm sad, but I think for children, if children are listening, even adult children, make your, make your sadness known Go like this, by the way, it seems like you always give them the bigger cookie. Okay. I don't like cookies, <laughs> but you know, so you can do that. All right, that is like, good. Wonder, that is good. If they never tell us, Jan, we'll find out from like the inner circle. <laughs> it's just <laughs> when the children get together, they go, mom, always oh likes so the best. <laughs> and I go, okay. There was one kid they thought like best. I try like them all evenly. And I go, I never thought about that. I'm like, it's, you know, I'm not that person. My, my husband and I talk about a lot. Favoritism would be like Joseph and the coat of many colors and the the jealous brothers that threw him in a well, you know, so we want to, as moms try, but we're human and we may, yeah. it's overlooking. So please mention it. I mean, I know my mom and I have had a lot of repairs by just having conversations, you know, just saying like, you know, why didn't you go to this for me or someone? She said, I didn't know. She was, you know, she was, she was, so it's always those innocent moments that, that you want to say. So Christmas is one of those moments you got to give to bless and not to get, right. you got to like in, each family does it differently. Jane, I'm going to tell you this, the kids got together because we have 14 grandkids and we have eight, no, seven children and seven, six son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws because now two daughter-in-laws and 
or son-in-laws, and they decide it was overwhelming. So they actually draw names to children. That's See, what we and, do. We draw names. And that's less, I mean, I mean, really the idea is that how much stuff did I get, unless you're two and then you want a whole bunch of stuff. Right, right. <laughs> like if you're older, you say, well, gee, it's not about the money. It's about, you know, how much do you really need? And we always, as a family, give away a lot. We do, we do that. I'm sure you do, Jamie. We, we pick yes. off the three. We find um, J- Judy Hardy is my prayer partner. She loves what I mentioned. So we've been together forever. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But we really, I really do treasure having a prayer partner. And she um, and I pray. Like in November, we start praying Thanksgiving for all the year, what we thank the Lord for. Then in December, we start praying that God will put us where the gift is. So we'd have to hunt it down because in the early days we had babies. And, but then we also pray that God would tell us some special people to give to that we never would have thought of. Oh, that's good. Ever, because but what you, mm-hmm. someone on our list or you something even know the person, just God will press on your heart. This person needs that. You know, when you get those Holy Spirit moments, Jane Ann, and you feel like, I need to do that. It does mean something to the person, and you mm-hmm. never know why or how. Like right now, I'm, I'm writing my, you know, I write 500 Christmas cards, it only have been 600 or seven, and I'm, I'm doing my letter. And I said, Pat, this week, I'm going to, since my knee is bum, I have a bum knee, I'm going to sit down and do all the people that write me. Like a lot of people write me because I send money. And that's, so I came to think the mission, this mission, <laughs> that way. And I thought I'm sending my letter because I also am in the ministry and I was sending my letter, not asking for money, just. I write a message of hope. So I'm going to do that mm. this weekend. I'm going to stick it in their envelope. They sent me, I'll put a stamp on it because I'm going to be addressed. I thought I'm going to simplify Christmas that one way. And then I'll start my real cards or my girls make the picture because we always make a picture, Jan. You always do too. See? Yeah, we people. do. So we I do it for fun. Thanksgiving. We all get together. At Thanksgiving, when we're all together, right. we'll have our, we'll take the Christmas picture with everybody. Yeah. Well, again, I think that's important. I love getting the pictures, Jan. I don't care what people say about this is a brag letter, or this is, I get a lot of comments. Some are really good. Some people say, like, I read your letter on the toilet. I'm okay. <laughs> I, like, I dropped the letter in the bathtub. I read a long letter, let's face it. So I used to write, Jan, this is how we evolve. I used to write about each child. This is uh-huh. the toddlers. If there's a baby, I'd write a cute little, but I change because my kids are all married. I feel like I don't want to ask them, is this okay? Is that okay? So I really write about Jesus and my walk with Jesus. And this year will be a really good letter if you get one. It's about life is an empty canvas, and you can paint out whatever you want. So that's my tagline this month. But what do you think about that? Like, what other things do you do, Jim? We do the letters. We do the gifts. So we do. Well, because I've had so many kids for so long. <laughs> Our youngest has just turned 10. So I just so not good. sit down and write a letter. And I didn't delegate that out either. We just sent a picture, at, you know, and we just tried to do something fun and cute. And, um, you know, and then I just sent it out. Merry Christmas, you know, I think something like that. We were very simplified in that aspect. Okay. And that then there were some years. Yeah, because I mean, we, I just couldn't, there was no time for me to write letters, especially with homeschooling no. and meals. And, you know, there just wasn't no, any, there wasn't any time. So See, um, different. That's my, that's my, that is my, like when the letters written, Judy and I both pray for our letters, Lord, give us our letter. And when it gives us me, because I wait on the Lord, just like I do for show notes, Jen. We just got latest. I waited on him to say what he wants on the show. And when I get that letter, I think, and it has ministered because one year God said to me, I want you to talk about the Eucharist. I go, really? Yeah. A lot of my friends are frozen and they don't understand the Eucharist. And he goes, I want you to write about the Eucharist. And yeah. I did, I did write about it. And I felt like, what if they all hate me? Because I said, this guy's like, uh, I don't know, whatever I did. I had all these, you know, thoughts in my mind that didn't even matter. Many people thanked me so much. God had said to me, what if they stand before me? And I said, I had a lot of Catholic friends, but no one told me that the host is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. As it goes inside your soul, it, beca- it, it breathes health in the body, mind, and soul. There's so much to the Eucharist that we have a friend, oh, Jen, Ray, and Dr. You're not saying Dr. Ray, but Ray, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name. And he's writing a documentary about the Eucharist. Yeah. The, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. What's his name, Jen? You know names better than I me. cannot pronounce his last name. Okay. It's a um, great name with a G. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's gonna be phenomenal. You have to see it because there's nothing you it's hard to explain, Janice. Is it when you begin like it's hard to explain the Eucharist when you're seven? I look fortunate when I was seven years old, the Lord came to me in the Eucharist at seven. So I never deviated from I was seven, I couldn't make that up. And I knew he was there and I knew how important I'd I walked four miles, two miles now. Wait, I'm not exaggerating, two miles of snow in New York. And if those who know me, I'm a scaredy cat. I don't like to walk alone, but I do it to get to the Eucharist. And I love the Eucharist. And there are times we don't go like our seasons every day. And it, it just means a lot to me. And I, I did. Mm-hmm. So this year I mentioned a little small portion because we're now back to our home church. 
But when the Eucharist is elevated, I Pat and I sometimes have tears. There's such a reverence mm. and a love for the Eucharist. So Jan, you yes. I'm hogging. Go ahead, you hot. <laughs> well, going back to Ray, his um document, well, the, it's gonna be a movie on the Eucharistic miracles. Mm. And um also his YouTube channel is called Joy in the Faith. If you want Thank to you. check him out. Yeah, he has yeah. a lot of great um things on the Eucharistic miracles and how it's how it's coming to be. And he has a lot of good speakers as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we just support each other the podcast. There's no, we said it before, Jana, because we're, we're like welcoming. We're like, all are welcome. Anyone can be our show. We, if you have a message that fits with our, our faith, we would love to have you. But we're not in competition. Everyone, just do the best you can. Be the best you can. And keep your eyes on your own paper. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just love that line. Okay, so what do you think about Christmas? We'll go back to that. What are the traditions? Did your mom do something you don't do? Or did you, dad, I mean, did your... Did Jared's mom do something you don't do or dad that when did you add what you subtract? I probably with my mom, she was, but she was always a really big, make it huge event, uh, very elegant, very elaborate. We, you know, it was, so I do, I do keep a lot that, that I grew up with, um, except when I had a lot of little children back to back, sometimes I would just do the best I could. <laughs> I mean, there were some, there were some years I remember I didn't even put up a tree because we had so many children. I mean, we had eleven children and they're all stair steps. So there were some, and J and my husband worked a lot. So there were some. There were a couple of seasons of Christmas where, but what we did do is we would go over to my parents' house because uh, my husband's Art. parents live in Chicago and we're in Georgia. So, but anyway, but and um, so I have to go more with what I grew up with. Um, so I really have kept a lot. So do the dishes you know we do do china oh, and yeah. um you know uh we do you know set the table and and have table arrangements and 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 then we you know go to mass for sure you know we do, do yeah, the midnight that's... mass or we do the morning mass so and then we open up gifts on christmas day that's just you know and just spend time as a family I, we call you know just just do nothing but spend time together i like that and you know back to ordinary time if we set the table with china and do the decorations and dress up out of our out of our regular ordinary clothes, it makes it yes. so much more special. So I dress up for every mass, Jen. You probably do it too. I say, I'm honoring the Lord. We're not doing it for anybody else or a show. It's it's to honor. Me. And then that makes it a vision. Mom, oh, it's Thanksgiving. We brought out the good china. It's yes. Fun. It makes them yes. and they want to do that same. I thought my mom's that same person. I'm that same person, but you know, we, right. we used to do dishes into the mid midnight. Now we delegate and whatever they do, we're happy to be <laughs> we usually host christmas on the christmas i hope we do it this year some years we don't we usually are the host for christmas but we do something else at christmas that um no one else does we have christmas day like i said and then we have a different christmas to get together and some that ends up being far away from christmas because to get eight children to get well seven children together with their you know the spouses and the grandkids it involves a lot of finesse so we try the best we can we'd love to be like every other family but we're not we're just are not and we do the best we can on that too. Um, we almost mm -hmm. never spend Christmas away from our home, the, the celebration day, but the day, like I said, we travel to one where the children are for one, everyone gets a turn. I remember in the, in the early days too, the youngs, we used to go to the youngs and they do that thing with the, um, Santa and he's coming and I love that. And I don't know how old, I don't know what, how, what age appropriate it is, but it is phenomenal because me, I'm a, my favorite is Santa because what did Santa do? Gave from his heart. He gave out of his own need. He wasn't a rich Santa. You know, Santa was in the old days. Saint Nick, I'll say Saint Nick. Saint, yeah, Saint Nicholas. Saint Nick. He was. He was not a. He was not a. Santa is a fruit of. He's a fruit of Saint, Saint Nicholas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please tell your children because that could be another yes. come alive thing. A lot of people do December six. I know families that do it. They um they put the shoes out, and some of my families do that. Mm -hmm. It's a really great tradition. I'm a traditional mom that likes traditions, and and you have to yes. like do them as long as you can. And then when they become a stressor, you got to go, okay, paper plates. But I don't know that I would ever want to do paper plates on a holiday myself, but we do at other places we do because it's the number of people. You can be up uh -huh. to 50 people and you will, you will probably have that too, up to more than 50 uh -huh. So we do. Right. It, yeah, yeah. And I, but like you said, ordinary time. So for the holidays, it's not ordinary time. So making it special by having the table set, that's, that's just a tradition that we have. And, uh, and actually, our daughter is carrying that on as well, you know, and um, I like so it. I think it's important because I think for our children, it brings, you know, good memories that they knew this was time set aside. I think that's good. And, you know, um, 
and that they have I, Trisha that I did start after Christmas Janet probably share before is we used to have a basket and I used to get lots of cards before stamps went up and everyone was counting their pennies and I said that my friends are all worth over 50 cents <laughs> so I put a lot <laughs> we got a lot of cards and now we get some emails or some kinds of like text but you know what the cards are important to people too there are some people that are sitting there home lonely like my mom, for instance, she had Julie's, and I didn't get any cards this year. Do well, I still get a lot of cards, not 500 like I used to. So it's the cards are important. Everyone's worth 50 cents. I encourage y'all, if you have the money, to set aside some money to the lonely, the poor, yes. forgotten, the marginalized, because this is an important tradition. So I used to put the cards in a basket on the table, and every night, we, instead of a candle at that point, just for Christmas, we pick one out and we read it and tell the kids who the person was and our history and little stories. And then I send a little card, your, your card was picked out of the Christmas basket. And I want to just tell you, we prayed for you and talked about you. But then it got to be when I had babies after babies, like, you know, you get more and more, it was like too much. So I stopped that tradition, but I did like it. Now, now we just want to say this. That's why Ann mentioned when the tradition, the traditions change and you do the best you can. So right with, I mean, with the different seasons. Yeah, we also do that because we do get Christmas cards and I'll lot we'll have we'll put them all together either on the edge of the, you know, on the wall or the refrigerator. And the kids like, well, who's that mom? And so we do, but we try to pray for every family that sends us a card as a well. So that is a, another thing we do during the um, yes, and season. then um one family, you know, we used to do this, it, it wasn't always the best idea because some kids are scared. <laughs> one family also has Santa come you know, to the house. And he, I mean, that, these are things you could try. If, and I think that some kids are afraid of Santa, but you know, right. Santa's not my friend and no one be afraid. I do another thing, Jen. I do. I just want to mention, because this is so funny. I decided I would be the elf on the shelf. It all worked out because I was freezing <laughs> in Georgia. And then I bought this little thing for $10 after Christmas. It zips up. It's like a German, you know, warm zip up sleeper. And I came down as the elf on the shelf, the kids, and it was hilarious. So every year, I, about December, I, I'm the elf on the shelf, and I give a message to the children. So grab on wow, mom. So y'all have to listen up to this, like a five-minute elf thing for the children, because, you know, Santa has to have a lot of help, and I'm one of the ones he delegates to talk to the children about how much the love of Christmas. It's goofy, I know, but that's the way I'm, I, I don't blend in a crowd. <laughs> well, children learn that. That's the way they learn. They, they're going to remember those things. So that's like, like 10 minutes left before we close off. Let's think about what, um, what like celebrations in the scripture. I mean, God was, I'm going to tell you this. If God was about beauty of creation, seven days and, oh, it was very, very good. And then he was about celebrations and like, my, I think right away, wedding piece of Cana, Jan, because I'm just fresh with the wedding piece. But what celebration do you want to talk about? Just maybe a couple of scriptural celebrations that he did. The wedding at Cana is a really good one because you see through scripture, because sometimes I think we can, well, I know me personally, I'm not going to say we, I'm going to say myself. You read scripture. <laughs> you read scripture. Me, the woman, it's me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm sticking for myself. You can read scripture and, and yes, these people that they, they were just like us and, and but, but he, it was all about daily life. Like you said, then there were celebrations and I like how they enunciated the celebrations, you know, like Jesus and the wedding. And that was important to them. That was important to them that they go. That was important to them that, that they were there. And so it, it stands out as a celebration and Christmas, Jesus uh, being born, you know, a lot of things happened, you know, with the wise man and the stars and the sky and all the elements. And I mean, it was a standout moment. Yes. yes. On the cross, standout moment, you know, so those are really enunciated in scriptures. And these are also great, great times for us to read these stories to our children so they can connect why we have the liturgical season, why we are celebrating this. And they begin to, it's not also compartmentalized. Like they yes. see one way in the world, one way in the church, one way in the family. I think it brings continuity in, into the family and into the way our children see as well. And I want to bring out two things. You said one is that they had no wine. And then maybe you're the mom yes. out there today and you have no wine. You're going like, I have a newborn baby and I just had twins a year ago. There are people like that, Jen. I meet them. And you go uh, like, well, yeah. I can really tie my shoe or what they told She barely goes to the bathroom by herself. So you know brush my teeth. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You have no wine. That's why we need a savior. That's why I said yes. earlier. I know I need a savior. I don't have the grace or energy to dance on a bum knee to um attend 
multiple things, like Jan has multiple uh, cases right now with going on with sports. We don't have the grace either. We're just like y'all. Or we're like, we make up. Why are we like, God, if you don't do it through me, it's not going to get done. We always pray the same prayer every day. I surrender all because without you, Lord, I'm going to just fall. Right. And I do, I want to put an apple, I want to put feet to a to, to that message right there right. because there are times when we had a lot of children and my husband was working very hard and we just didn't have we didn't have we didn't have the money that it was going to take to do Christmas. So I just want to say for the wine aspect that you were talking okay. about, pray because every single Christmas we uh, we did not go in debt. We did not use credit cards. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying this is where we were that we every Christmas from we've been married 29 years. Every yes. Christmas we would pray and ask the Lord for a certain amount of money. And every single year for 29 years, God has brought, he has honored that. And we have been able to do Christmas. So it's just kind of like for my husband and I, it's been a tradition just between us nice. for our children. So I just really want to say that it, what, what you're saying is, is true and it takes faith and God will give you the grace. And he will also, you know, he will, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> so, you know, that's uh ask because we my husband and I have many many times we didn't have the means um because sometimes we were just living paycheck to paycheck because a lot of of children you have a lot of responsibilities and and some kids were on formula at that time and we were three in diapers and you know how that adds up really quickly so just pray and ask because God was very God has been very faithful so with your faith like you were talking about the scriptures today our reading with the lepers the 10 were healed and only one came back. So I just praise, I praise the Lord for it because there were, there have been times where we absolutely, I could not see the wine. So and we also, that's where we also faith had, comes in. Yeah, we had the same Janet. Pat's a physician, but we were in a Christian community. Pat's very generous in different ways. I'm generous in other ways. So we took two different persons out of the generous. Sometimes we couldn't buy anything but bread and milk. Well, no, no, no. Well, yeah. I'm an actress. I was just smiling. <laughs> I went to the priest, I go, Father, my husband's giving all our money away. And he goes, you know, do you have things, to, food to eat? I go, we have food to eat, Father. But he's like, gives so much away that we never had like, a, like a new dress or maybe, a, you know, we just didn't. We just, we gave from our, like the widow's might, we gave our all. And when mm-hmm. Christmas would come, Pat decided the kids would get one gift. That was his decision. They will get one gift. And that's what they did. And my kids never did. Right. Complain. We just found the joy in giving things away and but I really would have done it a little differently I think now that I'm older I look back and say wow because a lot of the kids are very extravagant on gifts because they were given one gift one kid picked a squirt gun I'm like okay pick something else pick something else <laughs> <laughs> I was I was brought up with like I'm Italian as you know and there were gifts everywhere and my pal would have the thing when the kids came with their one gift from us the grandparents would really outdo themselves in giving but we really, really have changed a lot of ways. You know, in life, Jane, don't you think you say, I'm never going to wear green. And then you do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Never is I guess, a funny word. Oh, yeah. Never That's say what, never. <laughs> it's not changes. You go like, you know what? Now I, now I do want Santa to come to the house. <laughs> I like Santa. So you just, it is something. So it, take this show with, um, with the stuff that you heard today and you liked. Implement it. The stuff you did. Mm-hmm. You have a, a criticism, complaint. It could be this. We're not you. And everyone does it the way they feel the Lord's calling to do. I love to walk with the Lord because when I wake up in the morning, I say, Lord, I surrender my mind, my heart, my body, my soul. And here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And then I, then I, I be quiet and I listen. It's still a small voice. Tell me what I need to do that day. I always wake up. I'm never done with the things I'm on the list, but the important things that God told me to do, I try to make yeah. it get done. It's a way to walk. But everyone's, yeah, no one's, everyone's walking with the same Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. That is a, a Christian. But everyone hears differently. They hear out there. They're all what God's trying to teach and tell them. And that's when we need a savior. So, Jen, we're going to sum it up because I'm going to end on time. And people are going to go, yay. I only got a big clock. <laughs> and next week, we're going to have a guest because next week, we're going to have Sister Carrie, I believe, on a Monday. We put them out as soon as we get them. And we've had a lot of good guests. You know, we've met a lot of interesting people. Sister Carrie's a delight. So, we'll see what she says about it. Yes. This. And also, I want to say if you're looking for a Bible study, your book, that's a good gift to give this year. Wow, mom. I have a wild well, mom. Yes, uh, they all be telling you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so for a book, that's those are good, great. That, these are good, gift ideas. So for yeah, a Bible good. study for a, a mom for a, from a large family. Thank um, you, thank you, Jane. I have I seven have, children. Okay. Thank you. And it is a good Bible study. You know what the good thing about Bible study is, Jane? You meet this other sisters your appropriate age, and you 
learn from each other as much as you'd learn from the word of God and from the prayer. Um, Jan, so what do you think of the highlight of this show for you? Or what do you want to say that three things to remember? Or to right. So I want to say before you get started with these holidays, sit down and do a brain dump. I love that. Just put everything on paper. I'm that person. I need to get it out of my head <laughs> so I can have space to, to, to put, you know, to put everything in that. So do a brain dump, put it all down on paper, pick out the things that are most important to you, and then try to make those intentional with your family, you know, and, um, and, and only, only know the things you're in control of. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm in, for me, I'm for food, decorations, my attitude, <laughs> how I am, how I'm treating everybody around me. Cause as moms with little ones and a lot of children, you kind of can get stressed out. You're thinking, you know, but then keep that paper in front of you. So yeah. So number one, do a brain dump. Number two, keep your attitude according to what you all wrote down and what's most important to you. I love that. I love that. And um, I was going to pick up for my last thing is I say that I'm so glad you joined us today. And I really did like talking about Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving and Christmas and holidays and a no guilt holiday season and yes. look at your season, you know, a time for season and then appropriate season for the season. But I want to say that Jan and I are like, we're like, do you remember Jesus couldn't find a place to stay? So he knocked every door and he had been a stable. We will speak to the stables because so many people, big churches, they get a lot of people, famous people. Mm -hmm. We're not famous, but we're willing to help the women either on a Zoom or even in person to go and speak to the people in the stables, the little churches. So please know um, you can reach me at wow mom, no wow Ellen at yahoo.com and Jan, you reach you. At uh, yes, I'm Apron Ann Homestead on Instagram and um, also on Facebook. And that's my uh, I'm, um, Apron Ann Homestead at gmail.com. I love that. And I, I will get more out to you all and have a merry, a merry season of Thanksgiving and tell us your ideas. You can write us here at you know our emails or you can just. Give us a call. <laughs> you find me easy. I'm all over the, I'm all over the, so they can too. So have a great day and be blessed. And here we go to say, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me at Wow Mom. And please know that we're praying for you and please pray for us as well. Now, this is the hardest part of the whole show is I really am blind, blonde, and I can't see. So I got to find the little thing that says stop. And here we go.